Top Ole Haydn is Chelsea's new manager with the goal of making them the world's best club. And my first act as Chelsea's manager was signing Emiliano Martinez for 45 million. And he's already lived up to his price tag, making save after save after save, already helping us be third in the Premier League after two games. We do have 117 million to spend, but Top Ole said he only wants me to sign three players this season. Which means in this window, I've got one more transfer to make, and we will be making that signing so stay tuned for that. This is episode 2 guys, drop a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and let's get into it. Okay guys, right now at Chelsea everything is going well, we're third in the league, well technically joint top after winning our first two games, but there is something we need to address. And that is, where the hell is Christopher Nkunku? Because as you can see, he is indeed in the squad up, well guess what guys, I found him. This entire freaking time he's been hiding on the subs bench. This just proves I don't look past my nose. But back to business. We've got 117 million to spend. And Top Bowl has already made it clear we're allowed one more transfer in this window. And I did ask you guys where I should put this money. And to be honest, I was expecting a lot of you to say bring in a defender because Colwell and Fofana, whilst they are keeping clean sheets, it is mostly down to Martinez. But an overwhelming majority of you guys actually want me to sign striker Victor Gyokerez. And honestly, I can see why. He stands at 6 foot 2, 84 overall, 26 years old, with 90 pace. This guy is the definition of a brick wall and a goal machine in one. Now their highest asking price is around 70 odd million, so we're going to start on the low end, 58 million to begin with. Probably not going to go for that, but it'll give us a good gauge. Okay, they want Moise Caicedo in 20.6 million. Honestly, that is quite tempting. But as tempting as it is, I'm not fripping stupid. Okay, we're going to have to up it a bit if we are going to get Victor Gyokerez. Let's go to 62 million this time. Not sure if that's going to... Oh, actually, it has Sporting of Accepted. 62 million for Victor Gyokerez. He will be playing a crucial part in the team. Unfortunately for Jackson, that does mean he's going to become our second choice striker. But there he is. He will be wearing that cursed number nine jersey. But you know what? He's one of the most dangerous strikers in Europe and now he plays for Chelsea. But after signing Gyokerez, Jackson burst into my office fuming saying, come on Goodwin, what's this about you signing Gyokerez? I've scored three goals in three games and even got man of the match against Wolves. Shouldn't that be enough for you to trust me? I replied saying, Luke, in the City game, you ghosted. You played well against Wolves and Gillingham, but let's be honest, we should be beating them teams anyway. I brought Gyokerez in because he can score against any and every team he plays against, and he's proved that. You're a fantastic striker, and you'll get game time, I promise, but you need to prove to me that we can rely on you just as much as we can rely on Gyokerez. But coming back to the team for a set, look at that front four. Jao Felix on the right, Palmer in the middle, Sancho on the left, and Gyokerez up top. Ladies and gents, we've got a deadly front four. Now a lot of you were saying use Yao Felix as our striker or even Christopher Nkunku as our striker but when you compare the stat guys it's light and day. Victor Gyokerez is the far superior striker out of the two. As for Felix I'm not actually going to use him as a striker. I'm going to keep him on the wing. I'm going to convert him to a right winger to make sure that that bloody yellow icon that we can't manually get rid of anymore just does one as well. As for Enzo's yellow icon unfortunately unless I convert him to a CDM which he definitely isn't there's nothing I can do about it. But there is something I can do about the man management. We've got too much quality to just sit and rot on the bench, so I've created a second team, which absolutely amazes me that we can fill it with an entirely new start in 11. It genuinely just shows how many bloody players we've bought, man. We've literally bought the entire transfer market at this point. But guys, the transfer window is officially shut. I think this social media addition to FC25 career mode is so cool. I mean, the comments do need a bit of work because they just look like bots. But guys, it's Palace next in the Prem, and look at They've signed Ferran freaking Torres. I mean, it says to keep an eye on, so I guess I'm going to have to. And look at this, guys. We've actually got a pre-match intro. This is so cool. Whoever it was in the comments to tell me to go and be setting to switch this on, you're an absolute legend. I know that you guys all have seen this so many times already, but this is the first time I'm seeing it on screen. That looks so freaking good. EA, fair play to you guys. You've smashed it this year on career mode. But now it's time to try and smash Crystal Palace. We're undefeated, remember, actually, with three clean sheets as well, so we've got a lot to play for. We've got Jao Felix on the ball. We've put Malo Gusto on to give Reese James a little bit of a breather to get him back in action for ready for the conference league. But we've got Cole Palmer on the ball here. Sancho, he's going to find a bit of space. Can we get a shot off? Oh, good save. Here they come with Adam Wharton on the ball. Oh, that's a 
Gorgeous ball over to Ferran Torres, the same player we had to keep an eye on. And he's just scored a screamer. Oh my God, that was not a part of the script, man. Ferran Torres, that was out of this world. Nothing Martinez could have done about that, but we've got Cucurella on the ball now. We've got Sancho on the ball again. Can we get a shot here? Oh, that's almost a great goal. Oh no, Palace are in behind once again. Fantastic save. We need to try and get Giorquez a little chance, man. He's been absolutely isolated up top by himself, but here we go actually we found him first chance first goal look at that man 62 million he's got his debut goal i feel like long term signing yokires is the right move man jackson can learn so much from yokires and become a better player himself second half now and we are finding it really difficult to break palace down man look at the bloody defensive formation the rocky and it's a five at the bat for goodness sake the sweaty sods but we've got Cole Palmer in a bit of room. He's taking a dink from distance. Good save. Ball's coming forward now on the right hand side. He's done Cucurella. They've gone back post with the ball in. Okay, we need to defend well. That's great defending, Mello Gusto. He's just giving it straight back to them. Back post it's gone to. Oh my god. Gusto, you absolute turnpipe. I feel like if we played against a team that wasn't just completely trying to get a draw out of the game, Giorquez would be so much more lethal. But right now, he's so isolated, he can't really do anything. But here he comes. Oh, that's a beautiful ball to Sancho. Sancho, oh my days. A goal and assist for the £62 million man. Welcome to Stamford Bridge. Sancho is on the ball. Okay, we've got a chance from distance. Oh, we've just rattled the ball. Palmer on the ball here. I tell you what, he could get a goal for himself here from... Oh my days, what a rocket. Oh no, that wasn't even Palmer. That was Victor Gokiraz. Two goals, one assist in his opening game for Chelsea. What a freaking goal that is, by the way. I thought for sure that was Palmer. And that wraps up a very impressive debut for Gokiraz and a very important three points going forward. The reporter's asking me about Gokiraz. I'm praising him to the freaking nines. And look at this. Chelsea fans may have found a new favourite in Victor Gokiraz. You're damn right, guys. What did I tell you? He's going to be a very big part of this team. Do I feel sorry for Jackson for dropping him so early? Yes, a little bit. However, I've got to do what's best for the team. And what's best for the team is Giocchires. As we pick up our fourth win in the Premier League, Sancho, Palmer, and Sancho got a brace. 3-1 against Bournemouth. Come on, Chelsea. We are playing Palace though now in the Carabao Cup. If Jackson wants a chance to prove to me that he's reliable, he can start by getting us a couple of goals in this game. But Palace have got a long ball over. They're in behind two. So now, oh my days! What is it with Palace and scoring screamers against us? Come on, Jackson, lad. This is your chance to get us out of this mess that we're currently in. Oh, he's done well to spin his... Oh, my dear. Oh, actually, he's... Oh, we freaking lost it. That is actually really unlucky. We do have Jackson on the ball here against LaCroix. I don't think he's going to do LaCroix for pace, man. Come on, Jackson. We have a counter-attack option now. Jackson, I'm waiting for you to make... A... Jackson, for goodness sake, you're a striker. Make a bloody run. Feel well on the ball here. Okay, Lavia. Okay, we've got Jackson. Bit of room. Can we take advantage nope. of this? Jackson forces the save. Okay, and Kunku makes something happen. I see that run. Jackson has finally realised he's a striker. He's in behind. Come on, don't mess this up, please. Get us back in this game. He's done it with 10 minutes to go. He's had enough freaking chances, but at least he's finally taken one. But guys, it's come to a penalty shootout. We're going to go left and he saved it. Sanchez with the important save. We've got Cold Palmer. I tell you what, we're going to go cheeky. Going straight down them. Oh, look at that. Cold Palmer. There's Molly who saw to take it. Now, bottom right, we're going. Oh, my God. Sanchez is the penalty goat. Christopher Nkunku. We're going to go top left for this one. Oh, freaking hell. He saved it. Okay, Sanchez. You're going to go bottom left again. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Madweke. Come on, lad. We're going to go bottom left. And he's put it away. 2-1. Up we go. Devaney against Sanchez. He's going to go top right. Oh, my day. Sanchez is amazing at penalties. Keenan Dewsbury Hall. A Bon the Horse favourite freaking player. We're going to go dinking top right. Look at that, man. That is a beautiful way to send us to the next round. That has just proved something, though. Jackson, when it does matter, can deliver the goods. But after that game, he pulled me aside for a chat and he said, Said, you don't even have to say it. If it wasn't for me, we'd have won that game in the full 90 minutes. And I replied saying, actually, I thought you played really well. Yes, you did miss quite a few chances, but you also got
brought us the equaliser which led us to beating Palace on penalties. And he replied saying, wow, I wasn't expecting that, thanks boss. I do have an edit though guys, Giorquez, our main striker, is scoring goals, but so is our second choice striker when he gets the chance. It is the best kind of edit to have, but if Jackson keeps performing how he does, he's going to have a real stake in being our number one striker. But we can't forget about the Youth Academy, remember, Todd Bowley wants us to sign at least two or three players, but looking at these players guys, I'm not seeing any potentials anywhere unless I'm completely just stupid. This Thomas Webb guy looks good though, 48 to 62 overall, and his stats already do look pretty promising. But Fiji looks amazing, Benoni Singh, 58 to 78 rated, I don't even have to look at his stats, I'm signing this guy. Also Henry Ali, 53 to 71 overall, and Tomasi Ali as well. But there is another tournament, and if you remember from the last episode, we crashed out before we even had a chance to compete in it. I want another freaking shot in this competition. Oh no, they're coming forward. Oh, that's a great save. Oh my days, that's another great save. Oh my God, what is going on with our defense? Oh, there it is. For goodness sake, man. That was inevitable, though, man. Fulham have been kicking our backsides. Maybe it's because I didn't update the Youth Academy? I don't know, man. I'm still really new to this, remember. <laughs> Oh my days, Fulham have just absolutely slaughtered us. Yeah, it's game over. It's pointless even trying now. We are getting absolutely annihilated. Now, I have updated the Youth Academy, as you can see. All the players left have got decent potential. Some we can promote now, but it's pointless because the transfer window is over. Come January, I'll promote them and get them straight out on loan. And now I'll get Todd Bowley off my back as we head into our next game in the Premier League against the Hammers. Full strength team, Aguayka. Oh, bloody hell, man. Come on. Who got the goals? Yao Felix is a one draw first points of the season dropped but it looks like Fofana's training to be a ball playing defender is going to improve him a little bit okay he's leveled up I'm really not certain what that means though I mean he's now got two pluses on the ball playing defender I reckon we put him on something else maybe the stopper but we do bounce back in the Premier League with a 1-0 win over Brighton Victor Gokirez with the winner and that actually puts us top of the league ladies and gents we're off to a flying start but it is now time for the Europa Conference League and it is the new format we are in inside the league and honestly i'm looking at the teams in the conference league we've got to bloody win this competition haven't we surely i mean that's what todd bowley wants in ct wants us to win the conference league he wants us back in the champions league and he wants us to do well with the youth academy and so far we're two and three so let's make it three and three we've got jackson on the ball here oh my days he's through oh jackson bloody hell man you need to work on your touch lad here come again oh look at that for defending man they're coming into our half but they ain't getting anywhere i say that though here they come oh my god they've oh my days we've just gone one nil down guys that is appalling from us but here we come on malo gusto he's got a bit about him this lad as malo gusto he's come back come to can we get a goal mudrick is there on the rebound and he's put it away fair play to him this is the first game i've actually given him a chance in and he's got us a goal once again we've got mudrick on the ball he's gonna find jackson inside acres of room good save mudrick is once again on the ball he's open got nope. so much time oh good save again I think we're going to have to rotate, guys. We're not doing anything at the minute in front of goal. The keeper is just doing too well. We're bringing on Gokirez and Palmer to make a difference. We have Mudrick bursting down the left-hand side. Look at this from Mudrick. He's had a really good game. He could go all the way here, though. Mudrick has gone. Oh, he's just at the post. Well, that's it. Full time. Even with Palmer and Gokirez on the pitch, we still couldn't get a freaking win. And that puts us 23rd in the table. Honestly, not the start we were after, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. But Drawing to Nottingham Forest is the beginning of it. Madweke and James with the goals. What's happened to us? We need to figure it out quick though because we're playing Liverpool next. And looking at that team, there's no new faces that I'm aware of. I mean, that's not a bad thing for them. It's still a phenomenal team. But our team ain't no slouch either. But saying that freaking Salah. Oh my God, what the freaking hell is that? Two minutes in, Mohamed Salah makes us pay for a very poor pass. Oh my God, that just isn't the start we were after. But we could get an early reply here with Joao Felix. Oh, Gokirez. Okay, keep the ball. Gokirez. Oh, he's freaking blocked it. Well, look at this. Liverpool aren't done just yet. And Martinez got an hand to it, but he couldn't stop it. That's 2-0 down. Oh, my God. Liverpool are humbling us at the minute. We thought we were on top of the bleeding will, but apparently not. But hang on. We've got a chance to reply. Gokirez is on the end of this. Gokirez. Come on, lad. Prove your wave. Oh, 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 oh the freaking hell did that not go in? I mean, Sellers on the ball. He's on a hat trick and he's freaking got it. Oh my god, this is 
absolutely horrendous. Liverpool at the minute are just different freaking gravy. We can't do anything against them. Second half now, and we need nothing short of a freaking miracle to get back into this game. But look at this. Diogo Jot is through. Martinez has just been dinged. Cucurella with the goal line clearance. Oh, Liverpool are through once again. Martinez, good save. Joao Felix is on the ball. Okay, I see that run from Giocchires. He's found him. Okay, we've got one back. Ten minutes to go. We can get back into this. Apparently not, though, because that's full time. We've quite literally just had our backsides handed to us on a silver platter. That game has just proved something to me. Our front four aren't the problem right now. It's our back four, man. I mean, not necessarily Reese James or Cucurella, because they're actually doing really well. It's our centre-backs that are the problem. Colwell and Fofana, they just aren't good enough, are they? And the issue is, we haven't really got any high-rated quality centre-backs. So in January, one way or the other, we're going to have to fix this. But we do get a win in the Europa Conference League against Panathinaikos. 3-1, Palmit, Giocchires, and Giocchires again with a brace. Good lad. But we draw against Newcastle United. We keep dropping points in the Premier League against teams that realistically we should be beating. But look at this, the Ballon d'Or show. This has been revealed. Haaland, Lewandowski, Foden, and Kane are the likely contenders. I mean, I don't think any of our players are going to get this anytime soon. We're stuck in the Conference League. But we can go through to the next round of the FA Cup. We're playing Bolton with a rotated team. For God's sake, don't let me down. Good lads. Madweki, Giocchires, and Nkunku with the goals. Now, as it stands, the Premier League looks like this. We're nine games in. We've only lost one game, but we're fifth in the Premier League. But our next game is against United, so that is a must win. Especially for a certain G. Jaden Sancho, I mean, he definitely must want to win this game. But well, here comes the man of the game. Look at this from Jaden Sancho. Jesus, referee. Oh, don't tell me he's freaking injured for goodness sake. Casemiro, you defo did that on purpose. But he is on the ball. Oh my no. God, he could put us 1-0 up. Oh, you bloody jammy sods. We've got Cole Palmer here. We're going to try and find Victor Giocchires. Oh my, oh, that's a phenomenal save, oh nana. You little rat bag. I still haven't forgiven you for what you did to me about a month ago. United have a corner. Xerxes there. Oh, my days. He hits the post. Oh, look at this from us, though. Giocchires is in behind. He can make it 1-0. Oh, my days. What do we have to do to score past Onana? Oh, but look at this from freaking United. Oh, my days. I was going to say, if they'd have scored that, that would have been the most unjustified, undeserved goal I've ever seen. We do have a chance here, though. Look at this from Gusto. He's going to try and find Felix. He's onside. No way, referee was onside. But that's it. Full time. And Another two points drop, man. We have gone from being title contenders to just going for top four now, haven't we? We did defend really well in that game, but we just couldn't create any real attacking opportunities, man. And when we did, we just couldn't put them away. But in other news, Holland has indeed won the Ballon d'Or. Is this what's going to happen in real life? Let me know what you think in the comments. But for now, we're back in the Conference League against a team. I really don't know who they are. But we've just about beat them 1-0. Randers FC we played. And look at this. Giocchires picking up player of the match. That's what we pay £62 million for. And with those two previous wins, we are now fifth in the Conference League. Honestly, I'm not sure where we have to finish to make it through to the next round. All I know is I want to win the league. I don't want to take any chances. But we do have Arsenal down with a little rotated squad. We need three points on the board. Board, man. But here come Arsenal on the attack. Okay. Oh, they've got a good opportunity and they put it away 1-0 inside 60 minutes. Oh my days. We started so well with Chelsea. Now it feels like we can't pick up a single freaking win in the Premier League. Modric is on the ball now though. Victor Giocchires! Oh, what a freaking goal! Six foot two mammoth of a striker. What a signing he's turning into. Gabriel Jesus is against Cucurella. Oh, he's done it for a kipper. Bakayo Saka is going to eat this 2-1, man. For God's sake. And he's through again, ladies and gents. Bakayo Saka is going to make this 3-1 here, isn't he? Oh, what a save, Martinez. We do have a chance here, though, to gain a point. Giocchires with the ball. Oh, my God. Giocchires with the equaliser. Three minutes to go. Salvaging a point against Arsenal. I mean, look at him, for goodness sake. Ten goals, one assist, and 13 games for his third season in the Premier League of all leagues. He's having a cracker. But as I was planning for the next game, Jackson's just coming 
coming to my office saying, Goodwin, I know I may be stepping out of line here, but I feel like I should have played against Arsenal. I knew that we just managed to draw, but I feel like I could have won us that game. I replied saying, I disagree. If it wasn't for Gyokirez, we wouldn't have got a point to begin with. I like your confidence, but I've already told you you're not reliable enough to be our starting striker yet. Moving on from that, though, we're back to business in the Premier League, away from home against Leicester. Come on, for there we go. That's what we want to see. Sancho and Enzo with the goals this time. And we pick up another three points in the conference league. Jao Felix, Palmer, and Jao Felix again, fair play. He's another player that's impressed me, to be fair. 14 games played, six goals, three assists. I did initially favour Nuni Madweke over him, but since I've been giving him chances, he's paid the favour back and then some. But we lose to Villa in the Premier League, our second loss of the campaign, man. We need to book our ideas up if we are serious about getting top four football. I mean, as it stands, we're only a couple of points outside of Champions League football, and as you know, that's what Todd Bowley wants. So we're going to have to do our best to make that happen with a slightly rotated team away from home at Southampton. And we get the win. Palmer with a brace and Gyokirez with another. And look at this, guys. Right now, Martinez has got the most clean sheet in the Premier League. I mean, what a signing he's turned into, by the way. I mean, this just speaks volumes to that. But we are playing the bottle jobs next. And looking at the team in front of us, it's a very winnable game. I mean, for goodness sake, the only players we've got to watch out for are the back freaking four. For well, the stage is set, guys. The bottle jobs and Chelsea. Who's going to come away with the full three points? Ciao, Felix. Oh, that's a gorgeous ball. Victor Gyokires can make this 1-0 already. And he does 10 minutes in. What a start. The £62 million pound man living up to his price tag. And in the meantime, freaking increasing it. Part of me really feels for Jackson because whilst Gyokires keeps playing how he is, there's no way I can realistically put Jackson ahead of him. Oh, but here come Tottenham Hotspur. Great keeping Martinez. Oh, that's a phenomenal goal, Dominic. Oh, that's freaking your min son. I thought that was Dominic Solanke. He was in the middle of the park. Oh, that's a great goal, though, man. We slept for one second at the back, and they make us pay for it. Here comes Jaden Sancho. He's really done well there. Look at him. Oh, my God. Victor Jokiras can make it 2-1. Oh, good save. Jaden Sancho, he could spot that run. Oh, that's a gorgeous ball if he can get to it. Look at that from Jokiras. Oh, my days. Denied. This is beautiful. Good save. Make him some subs, man. Just in a last-dish effort to get something from this game. Felix is coming off for Neto, and Kunku's coming on for Palmer. That's a gorgeous ball in. Nobody's picking up Romero. What is that defending? That is freaking awful, man. Man marking was just completely absent there. Two players went up for it. Neither of them got it, but Romero freaking did. This is pathetic, man. Our defense needs a shake up in January. Otherwise, there's no shot we get top four football. But look at this. Gyokirez is away. He's through. Oh, look at him. The big man himself is going to actually save us another point. He is so freaking clutch. It makes you wonder where Jackson's going to fit into all this, man, because whilst Gyokirez is doing this against big teams, there's no room for him in the starting 11. But we draw in the Conference League directly after, man. There's no consistency with this Chelsea team. I personally think it's our defence letting us down. I mean, right now, Fofana is our best centre-back at 80 overall. That tells you everything you need to know about what's wrong with our centre-backs right now. We definitely need to sort this out in January. But we do have a chance to bounce back. We're against Brent at Stamford Bridge with a slightly rotated team and we win. Jao Felix with two and Palmer with one. But now we're in the Carabao Cup quarters against Aston Villa. This is a trophy I really, really want to win because we've got a great chance of doing it. We have rotated as Jackson is getting a chance in the starting 11. That's a great touch. He's spun his bloody man freaking out. Oh, where's the finish? Sancho is found in Kunku. And Kunku, Neto. Neto's got a bit of room. Let's think. Oh, my dears. That's a great hit. Sancho's there for the return. Is he onside? Yes, he is. That's 1-0 inside 15. We're going to have to have a serious chat about signing him on a permanent because right now he's on loan from Manchester United, but we also need defenders. Jin Sancho once again. Jackson is looking. He's, oh, I tell you what, though. Sancho can go all the way by himself. Look at this from San... Leon Bailey's pushing forward, though. Oh, my days, he's got the pace on freaking everybody. Nine. Martinez, though, forced to make another good save. And Kunku's picked that ball up in the centre of the park. He's got around his man, and he's taking a shot, forcing another save. And Kunku to take the corner. This is a gorgeous ball in as well. Buddy, shield, what a freaking save again. Second half now, we've got Cucurella on the ball. We're going to try and find Kunku. That is gorgeous. Oh, wing. What was that? 
Jackson's on the ball, and Kunku once again, is he going to get, oh my days, how do you, oh my days, how do you miss that? Kunku's on the ball now. Okay, we've got a bit of room to run at them with. Nicholas Jackson has been found. Nicholas Jackson to put us 2 0 up, and he's actually taken it. Great goal from Nicholas Jackson, actually taking his opportunity, and that's us through to the next round. And we follow that up with another win in the Conference League. Jokires, João Felix, and João Felix again with a brace. He's having a really good year. And that win means that we finish second in the Conference League. I mean, that all but guarantees us knockout group stage football, surely to God. But we're also back in the top four, I mean, by two points as well, above Manchester City, United and the Bottle Jobs. What the hell has happened to them? In all honesty, I don't really care. We just need to keep winning so hopefully we can do that. Yes, we can! A 1-0 victory, but it's still three points on the board. And we've beaten Fulham. That's two wins on the bounce, if I'm not mistaken. Jao Felix with a brace once again. We still remain inside the top four, but we're six points ahead of United. They do have a game in hand over us, but that will still mean we're three points ahead of him anyway. But as you can see, we're only five days away from the transfer window. But we only have 49 million, so that means that we are going to have to make a couple of sales in order to bring in a centre-back of the quality that we're after. Because that's what this team is missing right now, a quality centre-back. But we are going to sort that out in the next episode, which will drop tomorrow afternoon. But until then, if you've enjoyed this video, leave it a like, smash that subscribe button if you're new around here, and if you missed the first episode, just click right here to watch it.